today we'll be making the oven baked beef back ribs. We make these beef back ribs at least once a week because it's so easy and so delicious. This dish leads more towards the carnivore side, but feel free to add any low carb vegetables to the side. This recipe is more of a method of cooking rather than a recipe because it only requires two ingredients, beef and salt, but feel free to add any other spices you like to jazz up the recipe. Okay, let's get started. We get these beef ribs from Costco because they have the best value. We've looked at other grocery stores in the past, but usually they're double the price. This right here is about four and a half pounds of beef ribs and they'll take about three hours to cook in the oven. So first I'll open up the beef. First thing I do is just lay them all out. These beef ribs are incredibly marbled, have a lot of fat and collagen. So once you cook them in the oven for three hours, it all breaks down and basically melts. And because we're keto, we look for meats that are higher in fat to keep us energized. So we have our oven preheating at 280 degrees and I'm just gonna season the ribs. Use as much salt as you like, but we use about a teaspoon for this amount of ribs. Sometimes we add garlic powder, pepper, other herbs and spices, but I prefer them plain because the beef itself just tastes so good. So make sure to season both sides. If you season up high, it gets all evenly over the beef as opposed to individual pockets of salt. But you create a little bit of a mess. And then just take the ribs and make sure it picks up all the extra salt on the cutting board and make sure all the sides are seasoned. Okay, so let's prep our ribs for the oven. The main part of this recipe is the cooking method. What we do is we put all the ribs down and wrap it up very tightly in a pouch so that the ribs cook in their own steam and juices and that allows the meat to fall apart and melt and become incredibly tender. Okay, so we start by laying down two sheets of tin foil, about twice the length of the size of the pan, and we lay down all our beef ribs face down. This pan's about 12 by 18 and fits one full size rack of ribs. Now we take the tin foil and fold it over. Make sure it's incredibly tight. And we take the edges and curl them up. Make sure there's no air pockets or air holes so all the steam gets trapped inside. The idea behind this cooking method is to completely seal the ribs in this pouch and make sure they cook in their own steam and juices. This allows all the collagen and the connective tissue in the ribs to melt and the meat becomes incredibly tender and it pulls right, right off the bone. The oven is preheating to 280 degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to put them in for about two and a half to three hours. The longer you put them in, the more tender they'll be. Okay, it's been three hours, the ribs are ready. I can still hear them bubbling in there, so let's let them cool for five minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna cut the line right down the middle. One line on each end. Really just enough to move the foil out of the way. It's really hot, so be careful. Ooh, the smell in here. You can tell they're gonna fall right off the bone. Okay, so I'll transfer these very carefully onto this plate, making sure they don't fall off the bone. I can already tell they're melting. All the fat has melted away. I don't know if you can see this. But literally falling right off the bone. So the meat is all pulled right away from the bone. It basically tears right off. The whole rib will basically come off. You just, it's become like meat jelly. It's so tender and juicy. It's basically dripping with juice. I can't wait to try this. Okay, so let's go in for the first bite. Basically, you can just cut this with a fork, but it'll be a little bit more proper. 
You don't even need to chew it. I'm chewing it with my tongue. It's incredibly tender. When you bake it for three hours, the flavor gets so deep and rich, you don't really need any seasoning. Salt is more than enough. Sometimes we add a little bit of pepper, but I've come to appreciate just uh, basically plain meat with salt. Mm. So good. I'll let the wife taste this next and see what she thinks, but from what I remember, she loves this as well. Even when fully wrapped, you can see it's all nice and brown and it has a nice crust. Yeah, perfect. Okay, let's see what you think. Let me grab one of these for you. There's one. It smells so good. Is it good? So tender, just like melts. I'm just gonna go in with my my hands because too much work. Mm. It's like you know when you get the bone and ribeye from the restaurant, the best part is the bone. Now you just get a plate of the bones. Yeah, this is better than bone and ribeye though. So a lot of people when they're on the carnivore diet, they think that you know they they have to eat their ribeyes, eat ribeyes every day, and ribeyes are good but I found that, you know, having some variety is nice. So we found that like short ribs, for example, are a great alternative to ribeyes. I actually think they taste better than ribeyes just because they're so tender and fatty. Yeah, and the collagen, it kind of gives it that like a gelatinous, mm. slow roasted feel. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like when you eat the very edge of the ribeye, how it's very like tender and mm -hmm. marbled. It's the whole, basically the whole thing is like that. And the bone gives it a lot of flavor too. Choose your hand. I'm just gonna use my hand. Usually we, if we remember, we'll save the bones and we'll put them in a Ziploc bag and put them in the freezer. Mm -hmm. And then whenever we wanna make bone broth, we basically just dump them all into a pot and uh, boil them with a little bit of apple cider vinegar for 12 hours on a low. And uh, after that, you get the bones, it's amazing bone broth too. So good for any sort of recipe or just drinking by itself. The recipe's already really good, but then the, the fact that you get bone broth the next day or you can put the bones in the freezer for your next batch. The amount of collagen and marrow in these bones, you know, this part here is all pure collagen and fat. Good for your skin. My lips are oily. <laughs> yeah. These definitely grease up your lips. <laughs> so you don't need chapstick for. <laughs> if you have dry lips. Yeah, this is it. So depending on how hungry we are, how many pounds was this again? This was five pounds. Sometimes we'll just eat this for dinner for the two of us. Mm -hmm. And that's like if we had like a lighter lunch or like sometimes we do OMAD. If we had a heavier lunch, then we'd probably eat like half to three quarters of it and then save the rest for the next day. Usually depending on uh, if we come to activity or exercise. Mm -hmm. We did that day. Yeah, but yeah, you can easily demolish this if you're really hungry. Uh, it's no effort at all. Kevin mentioned earlier that like we, we used to add more seasonings, but salt is enough. I love pork ribs too, but the beef ribs are just like 10 times better. They're way better, right? Yeah. With pork ribs, you still have to add the other seasonings. Like the, the flavor in itself of the meat isn't enough. But with beef, I don't, especially with something like this, short ribs, like salt is enough. If you like what you saw today, subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, and leave a comment down below of what recipes you might want to see from us in the future.